Is hanging bad for shoulder pain? Recently, I posted a video where I claimed that one to three minutes of hanging a day can completely fix your shoulder pain. And it can, if you're doing other things as well and hanging is the icing on the cake. Now, of course, this has completely divided the audience. Some people are claiming that hanging was the missing link in fixing their shoulder pain and others are saying that it made it much worse. So I've made a video to address the concerns and talk you through how you can use hanging to fix your shoulder pain no matter where you are. So today I'll dissect this topic further with the aim to address these doubts. I'll tackle three main points. First, I'll address my experience with hanging. Then I'll address the comments from those individuals who claim that their pain worsened after hanging. And finally, I'll guide you through a step-by-step -step process to hanging that's great for everyone. Now you might wonder why my words hold any weight, especially with all the know-it-all keyboard warriors out there. I guess it's become hard to know who to listen to these days. I've been a coach for over two decades and in that time I've suffered a slap tear in both shoulders, torn rotator cuff muscles and had crippling lower back pain. And I've overcome it all without surgical intervention. Now the secret behind my success is collaboration. I worked with some excellent sports physiotherapists at Unity Gym and chiropractors, and they were working with me in the gym, which means that I was training with them every day, having conversations about injuries, and we also went live daily on YouTube to do a Q&A, where we'd answer people's questions about injuries. And I can assure you that that level of collaboration far surpassed any formal training that I have when it came to injury rehabilitation. It enabled me to devise exercise programs to overcome my injuries that weren't just safe, but were highly effective. And once I was back on my feet, more capable than ever, I used those same strategies and programs to help thousands of people around the world overcome crippling shoulder injuries and lower back pain. So let's address my video. Now, many of the people that I've worked with have found that hanging was absolutely the missing link in their shoulder or lower back pain. And just by adding one to three minutes of hanging a day was enough to completely fix their lower back or shoulder pain, considering that it was just the thing that was added to what they're already doing. However, there seems to be plenty of individuals who claim that hanging made their shoulder pain worse or made their lower back pain worse. But the issue here isn't hanging itself. Hanging isn't a bad exercise, it's how you got there, which means that if you performed hanging and it made your shoulder pain or your lower back pain worse, it's that you were trying something that was beyond your capability. It was a load that your body wasn't ready for yet. Now, as a coach, I see this a lot. People rush into an exercise that they're just not ready for, and they claim that that exercise caused them to be in more pain. Take the conventional barbell deadlift, for instance. Now, I've met many people who claim that the deadlift is the reason why they have a herniated disc or why they have crippling lower back pain and they can't do it. But the deadlift isn't a bad exercise when it comes to lower back pain. In fact, it's one of the best exercises to fix lower back pain. And a lot of really good sports physiotherapists will prescribe deadlifting, but they'll work meticulously on getting the technique correct because it's poor technique or lifting too much weight when you haven't optimized your technique that's the real problem. So how does this relate to hanging? Well, with hanging, you really have two variables that you can control to manipulate intensity. So the first is the angle in your shoulders. So if you put your arms out at a 90 degree angle like this, that's far less intense than bringing your arms up to 180 degrees like this. And then the second variable that you can manipulate is the amount of weight that you have hanging in your arm. So if you had your feet on the ground with half of your body weight in your arms and half in your feet, that'd be far less intense than hanging with your full body weight. And for people with severe shoulder injuries like shoulder impingement or slap tears or frozen shoulders, getting your arms up above this 90 degree shoulder flexion angle is gonna be almost impossible. It'll cause so much pain. So trying to bring your arms right up to 180 degrees and hang is just gonna really trigger a whole lot more pain. But that doesn't make hanging bad. It's like, again, with the deadlift example, it's like saying, I've got lower back pain, so I'm gonna try a 200 pound deadlift and if it hurts my lower back, then deadlifting's bad. It's just not the way that exercises work. It's all about applying common sense and using progressive overload. And this is really important when you're viewing instructional videos on YouTube. You should never take one video as a one size fits all approach. And if you've got serious shoulder problems or serious lower back pain, 
then you really want to be progressive and understand how you can manipulate this exercise to suit your needs. And this is where asking questions comes into play or working with a coach or a physiotherapist. And if you're someone that's suffering with a lot of pain, then just start your hanging on some gymnastics rings like this with your arms at about a 90 degree shoulder flexion angle. You can do passive and active hanging as well. So if you keep your elbows completely straight and just focus on retracting and protracting the shoulder blades and then just also doing hanging. So you can think of those as two different versions of hanging that are both really good to use. And then as your strength increases or as your pain starts to subside, you can increase to getting closer to you know 150 degrees or getting closer to that 180 degree angle until eventually you're ready to go to the full 180 degrees but you'll do that with your feet on the ground so that you're not taking all your body weight and then eventually you'll be able to go up to full passive hanging active hanging with your feet off the ground and then eventually even single arm hanging like what I demonstrated in that video on YouTube but writing off an exercise that you don't understand will be sure to keep you trapped behind your injury or pain a smarter move would be to ask questions ask how you can modify this exercise so that it suits your level of strength flexibility and it's manageable for the injury that you have a good youtuber in the fitness space will answer questions and guide you towards a solution that works for you and if you want to see a little bit more of an advanced hanging routine just click or tap the screen there and i'll take you through a follow along workout that's the hanging routine that i do daily it gets done in less than five minutes i'll see you in that next video